people you will ever meet. I really and truly, uh, just even talking about it, if I start thinking about it, I, I lose it. One of my heroes is Woody Allen. I mean, you know, I, 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 it's all about being neurotic and just being shy. However, I also have a personality. And I've learned how to use that. If it was up to me, whenever I'd say, and I was a good student, but in every class, I'd sit in the corner because I had a good view and because all the really fun folk always had the back of the class. But I also learned and I also spoke up and I still sat in the back. I want to be part of the woodwork. I want to blend in. Unfortunately, it ain't me. Okay. Um, so putting all of that together so you understand part of why I'm a cartoon character doing a presentation is pretty much going to be in some ways kind of cartoony. Um, and again, Margaret knows because the presentation, I know I, I, I've raised a couple of eyebrows in my presentation to you all. Uh, but that's who I am. And you have to be totally true to yourself, which is what part of my big message was to, to, to you all. Um, you really have to be put on my eyes because I can see but not well enough. Um, you really have to bring that out also in your PowerPoint. I don't know what your focus is. Actually, that's one of the things I was wondering about. Are you all um, looking at doing just presentations in general, or are you going to be doing a presentation at a conference or conferences, that sort of thing? OK, one of the things that I would highly suggest, and I think I brought that up in, in y'all's presentation. Uh, by the way, I'm ESL, <laughs> in spite of the y'all. Uh, if I get stuck in Spanish, I will translate unless I'm cussing that you're on your own. Um, and if you understand me, God bless you, I'm sorry. Uh, um, you, on the one hand, you want to be innovative, and actually that's what I call the presentation. This will be coming up shortly, thank God. Uh, it's uh, evolution and revolution. I think you have to really be true to yourself. You have to do what you need to do. But however, you also have to keep in mind your discipline or the group that you're presenting to and what they're used to. I honestly am not a fan of, of you know, shaking the, the foundation just for the sake of trying to get something new across because what can happen is people can shut down. Um, so I think you have to keep a lot of what, what is said here, and I'm also gonna post um, presentations, good and bad, and, um, links to different um, how to do presentations websites. Um, you have to take that and sort of balance it with, with who you're presenting to because that's my notification for my messages. Uh, I've got several of them. Uh, let's do this. I figure my phone should be as obnoxious as I am. Um, not more so. So, so it's, it's a balancing act, and I'm sure that you've probably already started. Y'all, are you all rats or rats? Rats, okay. So, so okay, cool, so we can be a little bit more adult and open here and turn off the uh, recorder every once in a while. <laughs> um, you know, we're here, I'm still a grad student, by the way. Uh, this is what happens when you go into grad school, I'm 26, and look at what happens. Um, <laughs> But, but we're, we're here to be professionalized, and we're here to learn. And I don't give a, a, what is it, a flying grapefruit um, what they, the, 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 the kumbaya mythology is of, oh, we come to an you know, educa educate, oh, maybe you shouldn't be here, <laughs> an education of higher learning to share and to grow. But that's not the way it really works. You go into an institution, and you are professionalized within your field, within the institution, within the field, and within the way that department works. And then, as we all know, you're, you're also professionalized according to how your advisors and your committee members work. So, so uh, again, this goes back to the whole thing with the presentations. If you're presenting in front of a group, first of all, you should always keep it simple and so on, do the Steve Jobs thing. I, I'm not a fan of, you know, dictator Steve Jobs. However, his keynote presentation Brilliant. His is the model for what all presentations should be like. Um, so, so keep that keep that in, in, in mind. Um, and I'm sure you've all gone to enough presentations and sat through enough. How many of you have sat through good PowerPoint presentations more than once? 
Really? Wow, too fast. Uh, how many of you have sat through way too many bad presentations? Well, you've talked about a good one just now, so yes. Bad presentations. Okay. Uh, I will also tell you, I was very disappointed about four years, five years ago, there was a, a visitor here who did uh, a lecture. Uh, he was from, who was that? I didn't do Toy Story. Pixar. Sorry. Who are these people? How do you, what's the name of these people who do Pixar? Uh, who do a, the Toy Story? Pixar. Um, and he did a PowerPoint presentation. I was like, cool. Because it came on and it was already the Steve, Steve Jobs thing with a black background. Um, but then it was white text and it was so badly designed. I was just so depressed because in the end, he did the stuff that, that I'm going to show you you shouldn't do. So, um, and I'm going to show you, by the way, my evolution with PowerPoint. So you'll see that, that how I've learned. Any questions, any comments? How do I get it to project, by the way? What well, may not have detected yet, but it's still coming up, so that's, that's also true. Oh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's see that. By the way, this room is probably, um, can, can we do one of two things? Can somebody close a couple, maybe the two in the center? Okay, nothing's coming up. Nothing's coming up, something's coming up. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, perfect. Um, and maybe also hopping. Again, this is one of the things you need to think about when you're going to present somewhere. You know, a lot of times, no, no, that's pretty good. Well, I mean, is it, is it, I think that'd be better. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The conditions aren't going to be favorable at all. You're going to have a projector that's probably, you know, we don't think about this, but most projectors, or a lot of projectors, have different formatting and different programming and have different color settings. And one of the great things, and I'm not, I'm not a fan of either system, one of the really great things about, about uh, a Mac is that it does have a, a place in the display settings where you can actually go in um, and create you have to create them, you have to download them. Uh, little, um, I can't forget what they're called, but they're, let's call them files that have different kinds of information for different types of displays, of, of projectors. You can't do that on a PC. So sometimes you'll go in, this has happened to me, you'll plug in and everything that you thought would be all these colors that would look one way, when you're projecting, you ain't getting what you thought you were getting. There's also the fact, and this is something to think about also, there's something called the safe, safe zone. Safe zone, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, let's see. Desktop. Uh, okay. Let's see. There's a safe zone, and not all projectors show you what you think is going to be shown because they have different parameters for how much they're going to show as part of them. Yeah. Uh, the good thing is that my computer is already being set up and I should be getting it this week. Okay. Now, the other thing about a Mac, Keynote. PowerPoint is wonderful, but Keynote has a certain um, depth to it. And this is a program that was developed specifically for Steve Jobs for his brilliant presentations. And it also has a few more really nifty transitions in animations, and I'm not a fan of doing them unless you're using them for transitions or for a purpose. One of the things, let me start this now. Ha. Is that something that costs uh, keynotes? Yes, it's, called, it's part of iWorks, and it's part of their um, equivalent to Windows uh, Office Suite, and it includes pages and uh, an Excel style uh, spreadsheet application. Um, this, and this is, I, I was, of course, it never works the way you plan it. Um, when I used to teach, and by the way, I've taught here, I've taught at SFSU, uh, the topics that I taught uh, were 
uh, African American studies and a lot of gender, but everything almost exclusively based on media. So at the beginning of the class, I learned this from Milton Harrison. I would have, uh, he always just plays music. I, because I'm mean, really super visual, I would prepare little videos that I would tell the students. The same about y'all is really, I really mean this, it's about me to get me in the mood. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, this is the type of thing that you can do with them, with PowerPoint or not, not the video itself. Although, however, you can, with images and transitions and music in the background, create something pretty close to this. This is actually um, a video, uh, a DVD I created. This is the menu that then I ripped. I'm also really good at ripping stuff and, and just doing all kinds of stuff in videos. So if you need stuff for that, let me know. I also know enough about the copyright to help you cover your butt. <laughs> um, and then I just I just ripped it and created that into a, a, a movie file and then dropped it in the PowerPoint. Uh, so this is, but this is very early. And one of the reasons I'm showing this, and you'll see it in a couple of images, uh, that the quality is not very good. They're really grainy because they're really small images with really low resolution. And what happens is they just look really crappy. This is one of the things you've got to watch out for in your PowerPoint. If you're going to use an image, make absolutely sure that it's a good quality image. Otherwise, it just ruins the effect of what you're trying to do. There's one coming up, as a matter of fact, with Ursula Anderson. It's just such a bad image. Anyway, um, so this is the title, blah, 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 blah. This is who I am. Uh, about me, pretty much we already talked about that. A friend of mine once said, uh, I was doing a presentation, it was my, probably the only big conference again, because I'm so horrified of speaking in front of people. He said, uh, why are you so afraid? You know, you are the expert, okay? And he was right. And now I will tell you, again about the rehearsing thing, this wasn't with PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> I rehearsed for like a week. I would rehearse in the shower, I would rehearse on the Muni because I was living in San Francisco at the time. Anytime, bang, blah, 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 I also timed it. What happened was, after I did my presentation, sat in the car and it was all over, the very first thing I did when I turned on the car and sat down by myself, I was still rehearsing because it became that automatic. The other thing about that, but it was good, it was great, it really went over well. As you can see, I had no notes, I had no notes about that either, it was something I knew about. Um, and I was the only presenter who didn't have any notes, didn't go over his time, and it, whatever I skipped, as I'm sure you've already heard, we talked about it during the question and answer period. Okay? And if you don't bring up everything, so what? Okay? Let's go. Okay. So, the expert is you. Whoops. Okay, the other thing is I've been setting this up because I'm really busy. And I oh, some of the effects and things that you can use with PowerPoint. Uh, this was about a discussion about the images of Martin Luther King and about um, specifically looking at, please tell me it didn't unplug. Oh, technology is worse. Okay, so anyway, what that was, was the, the I have a dream speech. And there's an image of Martin Luther King that I set to fade in at a timer. While I'm talking about it and going, you know, we all see the images of. Let me end that. Okay, I'm going. You know, plug it again. Um, you know, all we think of is, you know, the Martin Luther King. I have a dream. Yeah, okay. But this guy, just before he died, was talking, you know, with the unions and, and, and you know, defending the unions and out there for labor. And this man, in his "I Have a Dream" speech, there's anger and frustration. And as we're talking about that. Appearing, and there's it's my favorite picture of him, and it's one that you'll never rarely see. I just found it by accident, and he's in a robe from some graduation or something commencement, and he's just staring down the camera, the camera with these two or three other guys doing the same thing. That's not the Martin Luther King, you know. And it was that was the whole idea. It was about a moment of drama. Okay, it wasn't about a lot of flashy everything. It was that one, look at goosebumps, just thinking about it. I love this stuff. Um, and that's the other thing, by the way, if you're not going to love what you're doing, move on. <laughs> move on. You will get shot down. Because you are, because people are going to be out there sometimes just to shoot you down anyway. It's just the way it works. You're always going to be 
there's always somebody who's going to be disagreeing with you. And if you can't take it, move on. So, <laughs> you're getting a lesson in all this stuff not to do. But maybe that's a good day. Okay, so, um, so, so again, and we'll get back to that effect. Um, what you're going to be seeing in these next few slides is my progression in attempting to, on the one hand, be artistic, but on the other hand, to make the, you know, because I already knew, you know, the effects, I hate most of those effects. Um, so that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to basically still be artistic and still be individual. Also, please do yourselves a favor. Avoid the templates, unless you're really good and unless what you're going to do fits. Because the templates, and we're going to talk about posters later on, and the thing about the templates is that it limits you to within certain parameters in a presentation that you should have as little information as possible. Because it's about me. It's not about y'all. What do we do when there's a lot of words out there? We read it. Okay? The poster is the total opposite. You want the people to read it. You want them, and then you're standing next to it. I've never done this, but from what I've heard, and I've given presentations on this, and this is what they told me. You're there just to add. And so what really is supposed to have the attention is the poster. So the better organized it is within certain parameters, the better. Okay? One more time. Uh, also, the 
fancy or fun. However, I will say one of the things, and again, not everybody will recommend this, but I'm a big fan of the sans serif. And if, just use Arial or Helvetica. Just keep it as simple as possible. In the long run, it should be legible. Because again, you, if, if, if we didn't have these blinds, we could have turned off the lights here in this presentation. It, it, it would make it, well, this would be unreadable. Uh, the other thing is, I will say, I am a big fan of complementary colors. Um, but it doesn't look good here. It just it doesn't work as a, as a PowerPoint slide. Um, same thing, I do fill it up here a little bit more, but still very difficult to read. Same thing. Uh, but however, the, some of the great things. We were talking about cult of celebrity. And this is a bunch of young'uns, younger than y'all. Um, and of course, Britney Spears is really popular at the time. I think at that time when I did this, because at the time that maybe she was caught with that, you know, that, that famous shot of her getting out of the car, I won't go into uh, details. And so I said, cult of celebrity in history, you have Greta Garbo, this woman, until the day she died. There were people who were paid, who made a living just hanging out of her, where she lived and following her. This was someone who was in her 80s. And just this action of doing this and having this image come in and come out, same sort of thing as I did before. This is where animations are absolutely amazing to me. Okay, because they, they, can, they can enhance what you're talking about. Um, later iteration, a little bit better, I think, as you can see, bold. I think this is either Ariel or the other one. The, the background isn't so wild, and the, the, but it's still uh, a bit much, okay, with the red. Um, then this one, oh. Um, we were talking about the group projects, and you know how much we all love working in group projects. And so I figured, let me have a little fun with the students. And so, you know, we're going to start talking about the group projects, and all these start popping up while we're talking about it, okay? First smiling, and then, you know, you get it. But again, you see what I mean? This is what those animations, those really artsy things, what they're really good for. One of the things, to, two things to avoid in a PC. Clip art and word art. Their, their definition is not as good. And if you're projecting them and if you size them really big, on your monitor they might look okay, but they're going to look fuzzy up here. And word art. Uh, by the way, I also want to add that all of this, not this, <laughs> but the later stuff that like I'm telling you now, uh, where I work, I work for, for yes, you go back to that, I work for. Um, Academic Technology Services, part of the, uh, uh, and we're part of the, the, the group that we have is a couple of guys who do posters, but they do them on Publisher or Photoshop or whatever. They, they, they're, they're for the professional stuff. Um, and they also work on PowerPoint for a lot of departments. I mean, one of them just did like a, a 240 uh, slide presentation for uh, a, a, some cancer research at the medical center for I think it was an $18 million grant. So these guys are pros. But even with them, they have, and going back to what I said earlier, they will sometimes sit there and go, I can't believe I'm doing this on this slide, but it's what the customer wants. So you have to, you have to sort of settle into the culture that you're presenting for. Uh, but a lot of the tips that I'm, that I'm giving you now, what's really good that I've learned over the last year and a half is because I go to them a lot of times and, and I'll say, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I've also sometimes when I've had students that I've worked with uh, that, that have consulted with me about their PowerPoint, I'll take it to them and say, what do you all think? And I'll take it to the web designers and say, what do you all think? Because these are, I'm not artistic. I've just got opinions on everything. Um, but they know, and that's how I learn, okay? So anyway, a uh, little humor never hurt. Oh, this is another one of those really good uses, I think, uh, of PowerPoint. We were talking about Fawn Hall, the Grand Contra hearings. Uh, she was the secretary for Holly North. Very intelligent woman, obviously, because to be a secretary for someone like Holly North, you, you have to be intelligent because the secretary, in those days they were called secretaries, today they call them second assistants. They run the business, just like the people who run the departments here in the office, they're the ones who run the department, as most of you probably have already know. However, she is very pretty. What did the media focus on? Her looks. Eventually, she disappeared as this pivotal historical character and just became the model. But she wasn't really good at it anyway. She wouldn't have even gotten to the first round of America's Next Top Model, I think. But again, this is 
to me, this is the kind of use where, where because it does, it's not really about the words, it's about the images and what I'm trying to convey. I think the slide itself is kind of sucky, except when it starts doing this. Um, okay, so conventional, ah, this is the one. There was a discussion about tourism and uh, cultural tourism and so on. And I'd seen this picture and I almost created a riot in the class. And I'm not going to go into it why, uh, but yeah, it, it's, it's a problematic image, okay, um, for many reasons. And so, but again, that same effect of it comes in and it can hit you right between the eyes. Which is again why you need to be the expert because the bottom line is I wasn't ready. I mean, I know I get a reaction, but I wasn't ready how wild up everybody got uh, for and against that image and for and against each other's opinions. But if you're not the expert and if you're not, this is the other one, and maybe for some of you are going to be teachers, if y'all ain't the, 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 the parental unit, they hijack your presentation. So you have to be fully cognizant of the fact that you know what you're doing. And if you don't know, you're still fully aware enough to be able to say, I don't know, let's move on, we'll discuss it later, bring me a question, whatever. Uh, again, this is another iteration. Uh, I started getting a little better here, but still, uh, this is just horrible, too much colors. Now, here's what I tried to do with this, and again, this is sometimes where we fail with good intentions. This was for them, this is actually a quiz, and I wanted them to get an idea, and we talked about it, but really, it didn't help at all. Because what are you all doing now? You're reading what's going on. You're not paying attention to me, right? And it's just too much. It's just too busy. It's too small. Same thing for this. I wanted them to read a sample of something really badly written. Uh, and then a sample of something that was, uh, oh, and then talk about writing. It doesn't make any sense. I was going to hand this out to them anyway. Talk to them about it. Maybe give them a few excerpts. And then, you know, hand this out. Another iteration, a little better, again with the complementary colors, black, I mean red, uh, red and green are, are opposing colors. Uh, oh, this is, <laughs> okay, this is for presentation, I get this is another, uh, and it's, it's doing it on its own, if I'm not mistaken, because it's been a while since I've done this, but what it should be doing on the click, here we go. You have to hand it to those Italian directors. This is for a presentation on, uh, 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 Fistful of Dollars, which was the first Spaghetti Westerns for a class that was spaghetti, about Spaghetti Westerns. And for any of you, I don't know how many of y'all are film buffs, but that's based on uh, Kurosawa's Yojimbo, which I love Kurosawa. Um, and so that's from a scene in Kurosawa's Yojimbo where the dog, well, you know, and then he's, he's in this town and he's like, why is everybody acting so freaky? And then this dog walks up with his hand in. And, and that was actually the video. That was supposed to be a, a little video clip, but because I uh, deleted it, it just showed that. And then that's how I started the presentation. But I started with a joke, but it also told them exactly where we were going. We were going to talk about Yojimbo and about the Italian directors. Okay? Got their attention. By the way, I got the instructor's approval before doing this. Why? Because the instructor who taught this class never used PowerPoint. He would just show the film and do all of that. And out of respect, uh, because he was open to it, I'll tell you who it was, in fact, William McConnell, who's now the head of the, the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, which used to be at TRC. Again, you have to, you, you know, you can't make enemies and you can't upset people because some people would take what I did as maybe showing them up. And that's not what I wanted, what I wanted to do. And I, he let me do the presentation by from beginning to end. Um, uh, Oh, okay. So, ha. Okay, so this is just a little more. This I tried to get artsy. Please don't do that. <laughs> Please. Um, a clip now. Again, another advantage to Kino is that if you mouse over, and I haven't seen 2011 yet, our, uh, Office 2011. But for something that you want to discuss, you mouse over, you stop it, you can, you can go back and forth, you can play the video in the slide. That rocks. Okay, and that's only in Keynote. Again, I don't know about the new version. I'm supposed to be getting it any day now of Office. Okay, in the Mac. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, this is 
my final before starting to work here actually, this is what I went to. I still think it's a little dark, but I think overall it's getting better. The one thing I have to own up to is that it's a gradient. It's black on top and it's slightly red on the bottom. I don't even know if you can tell it. Y'all don't know, but I do. I got my red in. Um, but it's still too dark. By this point also, I have to tell you, I was asking the students if, how, how good it was for them, how visible, and I was already making changes. Because by that time, even before I got the stuff, I was already beginning to think of them, because they're the ones who have to look at this stuff, not me. Well, I mean, I looked at it for hours. The other really good thing I like about this, by the way, here's another, again, example of some of the transitions and things we were talking about, stereotypes of uh, Asian, specifically women. Um, she was, uh, oh my god, I can't believe it. Uh, Anna Wong. Anna Wong. Anna Wong, thank you. Um, which, and I really, just as a note, my favorite picture of her is that one. Because it's the one, bef I'm assuming, before she became, right, the Hollywood star. Um, but, I, you know, I also used those really small because they weren't as good and as, as, as high resolution as the other ones. But there's still ways of adding them into the, into the thing. Now, this, one of the things about PowerPoint and Keynote, this is a link. You can click on it, it'll take you to the page. However, one of the things that absolutely frustrated me about this was that um, even if you prep and open, you know, open the browser and open the page and set up your and plug it in and click that link, PowerPoint and Keynote are both going to open up the browser, go to the page, and interrupt your flow. Hell no. Um, by the way, this was, I don't know how many of you remember the commercial about three years ago, four years ago, the Snickers one, where the guys touched lips and did something manly, manly by pulling the chair, hair out of their chest. I, I have, still have it, by the way. <laughs> Wonderful commercial. It was taken off YouTube. They never showed it again because everybody got all bent out of shape. Anyway, um, but nowadays we have keepfit.com. You go to YouTube, you copy the link, of whatever video you want. And now YouTube, some of the video you can actually download straight from YouTube, by the way. I haven't done that yet because I have, I'm not doing that as much. But keepit.com, you take the URL, like it says here, you copy it in there, hit download, and it'll download it in, in Flash and in uh, MP4, high quality, low quality, blah, 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 depending on the video, depending on the original video. So you use it. And now, which I think is really cool, I discovered yesterday because it's been a while, if you're on YouTube and you're watching the video and you go to keep it, it automatically takes and plugs in. I'm like, dude, this is awesome because for a while there it was really sketchy. But now it's really smooth, okay? And this will work with other, with other platforms. There is also a tool on the back, on the Mac, and I'm sure there's also one for the PC. Uh, it's, a, it's a screen capture. Um, tool called Snaps, and that one you can screen capture images, but you can also screen capture video. Very memory intensive, very slow, but it's awesome because that's how you can do like if you're if you're doing instruction on how to you know click here, click here. But if you've got some video that like, you can't, and you're not here, turn that off. <laughs> you can get some video and just get it copy it, and then make it into your movie and drop it in your PowerPoint. Side note about copyrights since I'm being recorded. Um, for educational purposes, the doors have been opened even more, and there's more permissions for that now, um, as long as you don't distribute that video later on. So if you use it in the classroom, group it. Okay? Whereas before, it was, it was kind of sketchy. Uh, but also, I have to say, like all my girlfriend's DVDs, and I have all eight seasons, my favorite shows, uh, I bought for class because I can get them on YouTube, on, on, on Netflix. But I bought them because I use them all the time. Three courses on that show. Um, so I bought those for educational purposes. The same thing with departments. If they have videos, like a lot of departments have their own collections or instructors have their own collections, they bought with grant money or department money. That's okay because that's why you pay an extra premium. So there's ways of getting around. Right. So, any questions before I go on? No? Okay. Oh, oh, okay, there we go. Um, by the way, good use of a template. I have to say, this is from one of the presentations. 
This one is very well designed, but it, it, it's very rare. Um, some of the stuff that it says, good. Oh, color, oh, they're British. I'm so impressed with this O-U-R endings. They just sound so truly like they know what they're talking about. Being a foreigner, I'm impressed easily with that kind of stuff. Um, spelling and grammar, good. Pr Proofread, for God's sake. I love this. It is an over-the-top example, but that's the reality also a lot of times. Another thing, and I was watching a video, and I'm going to put the link on there for y'all. It's a YouTube video on how to do good public presentations. And what was fascinating to me was that the man is obviously talking about this part, not this part. And his slide had beautiful image, but then it had this green, this, this very light white, not, not bold text right over this very light green color. So you couldn't barely read what the slide said. You want to see really good slides, by the way. How many of you watch um, the PBS specials where people like, um, um, the Lord, he's the spiritual guy who's been with over the ball guy. Uh, anyway, uh, a, a, a lot. Anybody? No, no. It, it, they have slides, but they have the kinds of slides that are perfect. Just one or two points. In all of those, uh, the, the Dr. Ahmed, you know, with the brain stuff and everything, really beautifully thought out slides. That's the kind of thing you should be watching out for. Um, I did for um, what it said, SmartSite 2.6. This was for actually department heads and uh, the, 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 the technical people for a lot of different departments, which freaked me out because I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to do this. This was a presentation that had originally been done by, by my boss and some other people, and I just said, can I tailor this to me? Because I knew what I was talking about. And I, this is the way I did it. One of the things that I talked about with Steve and Steve, the two PowerPoint guys, I don't know if you caught on, but all of my slides had green and or blue. I want the slide not only to stand out, but also to have a certain serenity to it. Because God only knows I ain't about serenity at all, at least not on the outside, not when I'm presenting. <coughs> so I wanted a calming color. What they told me kind of freaked me out. The most calming color is pink, not hot pink. Uh, but, um, a, very, a lighter pink. They found this in the 70s, and actually they were telling me that in the 70s, what they actually did was, I'd never heard of this. I'm an airhead, so maybe I didn't notice. Um, it was like a pen rock kind of thing, where they would sell like this little piece of either rug or something that was pink, and it was like, oh, you'd stare at it, and you'd be peaceful, and blah, 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 you know. So, so what I did on their recommendation, and this is also part of their recommendation, by the way, and I actually did consult with them on this one, um, black background, because in a room like this, it blends in better. And, and don't ever use the white background because that's glaring. That, that's just truly glaring. Uh, also, even if it's darker, it's going to be more, even if it's more light in here, it's going to be more visible with the light, with the light colored text. Uh, the text, two different variations of the same color. I actually have four that I've saved and I always use. Slightly pink. You can barely tell, maybe, I don't know if you can notice it. The other one's a little lighter. Just one image, and then that, and then the rest of the presentation transition, right? Open door, we formed timeline, again, transition, that's why I did that, um, a link. I knew what I was talking about, so I didn't have to have any more details. This, whoops, this, by the way, again, another transition. Um, for some, people, for some reason, people really like that. Um, these are all links. You can link in PowerPoint and Keynote, so you can click on that. It's not in this one because I, I just cut, copied, copied these. And it would go to other slides and then come back. So you can actually have loops that you can go to depending even on how your discussion goes. Um, which is what I wasn't sure about how much time I have. So again, very plain, very simple. The two colors, by the way, also, I don't know if you're noticing. Um, Another those loops are all made in Keynote. And in PowerPoint. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll do the same thing. 
This, just because I love it, sorry, this is from that presentation on Fistful of Dollars, and he's getting the live beat out. Um, and that's a loop, by the way, that I created of the guy laughing, it was a longer because it had to be restrained myself. So, good PowerPoint. Um, good, concise PowerPoint. I love that. I don't know if you've heard it, but it, it, it's, it's all about Christmas, and, and it's just one or two slides. And she's also, on top of everything else, doing precisely what you should be doing. Now, paying attention to the slides, because they're helping you keep them focused. They're supporting what you're saying, and she's not even looking at it. She knows. Bam, 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 bam. Superb. Okay, this is a superb PowerPoint presentation. There is something, and I'm going to post this also, and there's a, there's a there's one example in, in, in uh, YouTube. It's called Pichachka. And Pichachka is, Pichakucha is what it, the way it looks. And it's 20 slides, 20 seconds. And you have to time it and you have to go through it. Not good for educational purposes, but if you practice something like that, you got to be on point. Okay, now the other one that I love, when technology fails, How appropriate.
See, I told you so. And he knows much better what he's doing. And he's, I love it because you've confirmed so many things that I was saying before. Thank you. In, in, my, <laughs> in my lectures and about ADAs and about audience. But see, I told you. <laughs> I'm very excited that you've said as many things that you've said because that's what I've been aiming at. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Right, oh no, 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 but I mean, just in general, you don't want me supporting you. Oh. <laughs> Your credibility flies out the window. Uh, I, I've never joined a club that would have me as a member of the Anybody else? So we have, uh, just to let you guys know, we have the next week, on Yes, and what I would really like I if, the yeah, and what I really like is impossible. Um, if any of you have stuff and you're willing to be the the, the scapegoat and, and ask, not the scapegoat, but the <laughs> sacrificial <laughs> lamb. <laughs> yes. um, I'm the scapegoat because you can always blame me. Um, but but in your in your case, if you have anything in specifically that you have in mind or that you're thinking of doing, bring it in and we'll share it. Because honestly, to me, and again, it's the best way to learn, because I don't have the best taste. I'm, and I'm not very artistic. I'm very analytical. But when it comes to the artistic stuff, there's other people that can bring in stuff. And even the analytical, I mean, it just depends. You know, there's always great to have different points of view. So yes, please. And also for posters, for posters we're going to be doing the same thing. Anything else? So you said that uh, not using white background is a visual condition. Yes. Um, but I mean, I have a, some of some teacher of mine told me just the opposite. He told me like keep it small, keep the white background, and then you know like few things and um, in black usually because it reads better. This what he told me. Okay. So you know what? What did I say at the beginning? When you're working with that professor, you follow that. When you're not working with that professor, you do whatever you feel is right. Uh, the other thing I would suggest, taking, especially on the Mac, it's a lot easier. Taking that white background mm -hmm. and just giving it a slight beigeiness or something mm -hmm. to cut down the glare, because that's what really gets me. It's not the white per se, it's just that glare, especially when it's black. Every it's black, everything else. And as a matter of fact, one of the, one of the slide presentations that I have that recommends how to do stuff is on white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know. But it, it, so it's also a matter of taste. So, yes, so that was one that was doing it. Oh, that's it. Anybody else? Thank you very much.